I'm Christina Manthe. I am the president of the League of Women Voters of Jefferson County. The League thanks the candidates for their participation in this forum for the Jefferson County Commissioner's election. We would like to especially thank you, the voter, for taking this time to be informed about the Jefferson County Commissioner's candidates. Our mission is to empower voters. We envision a democracy where every person has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. We are proud to be not nonpartisan. We neither support nor oppose candidates for political office at any level of government. But we are always working on vital issues of concern to members of the League and the public. The leaders we elect to make decisions that affect our daily lives. Elections are our chance to stand up for what matters most to us and to have an impact on the issues that affect us, our communities, our families, and our future. This forum will provide you with the opportunity to hear directly from the candidates for the county commissioner. Let's get started. The moderator today is Kath Barone, a league member, former state league president, and the current statewide coordinator for our online voter guide, vote411.org. Thank you, Christina. And welcome to the Jefferson County Candidates Forum. The goal of this format forum is to present the views of the candidates in a fair, nonpartisan setting so that you, the voter, can make an informed decision. All candidates whose names will appear on the ballot have been invited to participate in this forum. Unfortunately, Hans Rahmer from District 1 has not appeared today. We will keep an eye on that if he shows up during this forum. The views expressed here will be those of the candidates, not the views of the Jefferson County League of Women Voters. The Ford format that all the candidates have agreed to prior to is as follows. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement and one minute for a closing. The League has prepared four questions that will be provided, will provide the candidates an opportunity to share their positions, thoughts, and plans if elected. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond to all four questions and will take turns answering who goes first. Let's take a look at what the responsibilities and roles of the county commissioners are. They adopt the county budget, declaring county emergencies, entering into contracts, purchasing, maintaining, and selling county property, providing human services, their authority for roads, land use, and zoning in unincorporated areas, develop and implementing county policy, they supervise the county administer, administration and staff, and they work in cooperation with other elected county officials and metropolitan areas officials within the county. This election, you the voter will be electing two out of the three positions to represent District 1, which serves the upper portion of the county, and District 2, which serves the middle portion. They are elected at large by all el eligible voters within the county, but a candidate must live within their specific district. The term in office lasts four years and is limited to two consecutive four-year terms. For District 1, we have three candidates running, Tracy Kraft Thorpe, Libby Zabo, and Hans Romer. For District 2, there's two candidates running, Joni Amon and Andy Kerr. It is my honor to introduce the 2020 candidates for county commissioner. Please welcome them. Let's begin with our opening statements. We're gonna go in ballot order. So for district one, that would be Tracy, Libby, and then for district two, Joni and Andy. Tracy, would you please begin your opening statement? Thank you so much. I'm Tracy Kraftharp. I'm running for county commissioner in district one. Um, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for doing this forum and do a special thank you and shout out to my um, League of uh, Women Voters unit, the Arvada unit, that I have been a member of for, I don't know how many years, eight years maybe. 
um, and have appreciated the work that the league does, especially around voting and um, uh, voting education. So um, I've worked for a long time in this county. I worked at Family Tree. I was the director of adolescent services and the director of the battered women's services. Um, I've also served on the um, Denver Public Schools District Accountability Committee, City of Arvada Human Resources Committee. The story I always like to tell is they invited me to the city council meeting um, to thank me for my 10 years worth of work on the Human Resources Committee and said, okay, thank you, goodbye now. So uh, it, was a, it was a good experience. So in addition to that, I've had my own small business for uh, 15 years, helping small businesses and nonprofits reach their capacity. And I'm finishing up my term as state representative in House District 29, um, gonna be termed out this year. So I have represented both um, Arvada and Westminster. So I have some solid experience and deep roots in this community. There's three things to know about me that give you a feel for who I am and differentiates me from my opponents. One is I'm accessible. I do town meetings every month. I do community coffees. I do newsletters. I meet with people regularly. Two, um, I pull people together, find common ground. And three, I don't just talk, talk, talk. I get things done. My skills uh, will be invaluable during this time when Jefferson County has some unique needs of budget, COVID, economic recovery. Um, I'm Tracy Craftharp. I'm running for County Commissioner in District 1 and I'm asking for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Libby? Well, good morning and thank you for inviting me, Kath, and the rest of the League of Women Voters. I'm Libby Zabo. I'm the Jefferson County Commissioner in District 1. And District 1 is in the northern part of the county. My husband, Dennis, and I have deep roots here in Jefferson County. I've lived in Jeffco almost my entire life. Growing up here gives me insight and perspective on how special Jeffco really is. It's where we've raised our four children, and now our grandchildren get the opportunity to grow up here also. I'm so proud to say that I have been able to live out my American dream here and want our county citizens to have that same opportunity. After serving two terms in the state legislature where I was recognized as the first Hispanic woman to be elected assistant leader, I understand the broader view of what our citizens and businesses need to thrive. I believe our county government should work for the people through a collaborative environment. Our family owned a small business here in Jefferson County for more than four decades. And I understand the strain it puts on small businesses to be faced with the burden of increased regulations and higher taxes. My voting record in the state house and as your county commissioner shows that I am committed to sound fiscal policy so that entrepreneurs can thrive in our county. I've served on the Board of County Commissioners for the past five and a half years and was elected chair three times. And I believe the best communities are created when government elected officials listen to the people they serve and their thoughts on how they want their community to look. I take this responsibility very seriously and I'm humbled every day to serve the great people of Jefferson County, what we call home. Thank you so much. Thank you, Libby. Now on to District 2. I will ask Joni to go first and then followed by Andy. Joni, when you're ready, please unmute. Thank you for that little reminder, Kath. <laughs> I was muted. Hi, everybody. I'm Joni Inman, and I'm running for County Commissioner District 2. A little bit over a year ago, I was at an Arvada Chamber breakfast when I made my final decision to run, and I'll tell you why. We had a ballot issue on the um, ballot at, at that time. It was whether or not to um, do away with the uh, Taxpayer Bill of Rights limitations in Jefferson County for seven years, and our community was divided. My party was divided on that particular issue. And I walked into a room at the Arvada Center a little bit late as usual, and Sheriff Schrader just motioned to me that he had a seat next to him, and I went and sat down next to him, and I looked across the room and somebody from my own party was glaring at me. And I thought, you know what, this is not the community that I grew up in. 
we have to work to make sure that incivility and divisiveness doesn't swallow us up in Jefferson County. I walked out determined to run for this office. I love this community. I went to Dunstan Junior High and Bear Creek High School. I met my husband at a nightclub on Colfax, married him at a church in Conifer. All four of our children were born and raised in Jefferson County. I've worked in Conifer, Arvada, Wheat Ridge, and Lakewood, and I got my first craft ticket in Arvada, and my last one in South Jeffco. I worked as a newspaper reporter covering this county many years ago. This is my home, and I'm part of the tapestry of this community. Combine that with my professional experience as a small business owner, a business consultant, former deputy city manager and director of the mayor's office in Lakewood, as well as having served on the board of trustees at St. Anthony Hospital and then later as vice president of public affairs. And I think you'll agree that experience matters. I believe my management experience in both business and government makes me the most qualified candidate for the office. I'm happy to be here with the league today. Our cry from doing this in the studios of the Lakewood, <laughs> Lakewood uh, LTV studios, um, but it's, it's effective and I'm happy to be here with you today. Joni Inman, Jefferson County Commissioner, you please visit my website, JoniForJeffCo.com, and I'd like your vote. I was going to say this in November, but here we are, ballots are out as soon as you get your ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Joni. Andy? Great. Thank you so much for having us all here today. And my name is Andy Kerr. I'm running for Jefferson County Commissioner in District 2. And I'm so pleased to be part of a process that the League of Women Voters is, is well known for promoting good governance, good voting practices and making sure that our democracy is strong. After all, that's, that's what uh, the, the namesake of Jefferson County, Thomas Jefferson uh, envisioned for our country. And as a social studies teacher who teaches US government every semester to high schoolers throughout Jefferson County, that's what I believe in. I grew up here in Jefferson County. I've lived here most of my life I went to Foothills Elementary, yes, Dunstan Junior High School as well, and Green Mountain High School is uh, where I graduated from. My wife uh, graduated from Arvada High School, and my three kids are third generation Jeffco residents uh, on my wife's side. So uh, I, I too am uh, very much a part of Jefferson County. Uh, teaching has always been a passion of mine, and and has uh, allowed me to meet uh, families from throughout Jefferson County and find out what's on their mind. I believe so strongly that educators should be a part of our political process that I ran for office and I served for three terms in the state house, two terms in the state senate. And those 12 years really taught me the issues around transportation, around wildfire mitigation, around making sure that we have affordable housing and a thriving economy throughout our state, but especially here in Jefferson County where I've always represented. All five of my campaigns were in swing seats where you had to reach out to all the voters and make sure in office you represented everyone. I, I can say uh, that the, the voters agreed with that and always returned me to office to continue my work of listening to people. People. I made a habit, even before I was in office, of going to our local town hall meetings, and I continued that in office, making sure that my constituents had easy access to my ear and that I wasn't making decisions based, based upon uh, the wealthy and powerful interests who could afford to send lobbyists to the Capitol, but I was making uh, my decisions based on the people who would call me up, come to my town hall, come to my appetizers with Andy, and we would have one-on-one -on -one conversations. That is what I think good governance is about. I think that's what uh, campaigning is about. Andy Kerr, District 1 County Commissioner, I would uh, very much appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. That's the end of our opening statements. Now we move on to the question and answer session. You'll have 90 seconds to respond to each question. The first question, um, the rotation will be District 1, 
Libby, and then Tracy, and in District 2, Andy, and then Joni, and I'll remind you before we go into that section. The first question is, you, county commissioner job is complex and important. We are, excuse me, what are your top priorities for the county and how will you address them? We first go to Libby. Great, thank you. That's a great question. And I'm a firm believer that individuals have a duty to serve the community we call home. We can all make a difference in ensuring our community is a great place for all to live, work, and play. I'm running to make Jeffco that place. My top priorities are health and safety for all citizens in this unprecedented times we live in. Everyone should have the confidence that their community is safe and that their leaders are focused on the unique needs during this pandemic. Finding the balance in recovering from COVID-19 safely and giving our business of businesses a fighting chance to survive is crucial. It's time, it's a fine line to keep the population safe and keep our businesses operating so they can continue to make a living. I want to make sure that we find that sweet spot to make sure our community continues to thrive while staying safe and healthy and finding out of the box solutions in transportation is also vital. In the past few years, there have been many attempts to find a solution to a statewide transportation problem and it's been to no available. It's time to start thinking outside the box like I always have and find a countywide solution or maybe even a regional solution. And I will continue to push those common sense solutions at Dr. Cog and at Jeff Tag, like I always have. It takes all of us to work together to create the best solutions for our community, making sure citizens have a voice in their county government is another priority that I hold dear. I will continue to advocate for every citizen having a voice in how they want their community to look. Thank you. Thank you, Libby. The question is to Tracy. I'll repeat the question. What are your top priorities for the county and how will you address them? Mute. And, we'll I, had a, and I had a great start too, and I didn't unmute. <laughs> so thank you. Um, boy, life sure did change in March, didn't it? Before March, if we would have had this forum, my answer would have been, number one, budget, the budgetary matters in Jefferson County, and number two, growth issues, um, our mental health issues, transportation, homelessness, affordable housing. But since March, those priorities sure have changed. And now I would say the three priorities in our county are, number one, COVID, number two, economic recovery, and number three, racial inequity. How would I address those issues? You know, I think that our um, uh, economy will improve as our consumers start to feel confident enough to be able to go to stores. What I like to think is that the day that I go to the DSW, instead of going online to buy shoes, that's the day that we know that the economic recovery is moving along. How do we increase that consumer recovery? And at the same time, be able to um, get a hold of this virus that is rampant in our community. We do that through taking the advice of science and facts, utilizing the advice of our public health officials, mass notices, safely distance. Um, as we're utilizing those um, techniques and those tools, we'll see our economic recovery um, increase and we'll see COVID, we do see our number of COVIDs um, increase. Racial inequity, I think we need to do a careful examination of all of our policies and our contracts. We need to uh, really review all of that. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy. On to District 2. It will be Andy first and then Joni, and I'll repeat the question. What are your top priorities for the county and how will you address them? Andy? Great, thank you. Uh, so important to make sure that uh, our, our county commissioners have, have a vision in place and, and have priorities uh, lined out. Uh, as you can see on my website or uh, my answers uh, that were, were sent in earlier, that my priorities uh, certainly lie around the current crisis we're in, especially as that relates to how the county is able to deliver the services like public health, uh, helping to solve transportation solutions and wildfire mitigation as well. 
all of that uh, does tie into our, our public health, both our, our physical and mental health. And it also has this overriding uh, issue of climate change uh, over, over everything. And we've seen that here in Colorado. We've seen it throughout the West uh, with the incredible wildfires. We've seen it throughout our country with uh, the, the large number of hurricanes uh, battering our, our coast. And I want to make sure that we are addressing uh, climate change in everything we do. Our budget is not allowing us to uh, meet these services, our public health services. And I am absolutely an advocate for making sure that science and data are a part of any solution we are searching for. We have to put all of the partisan rhetoric behind us and we have to talk to the experts. We have to listen to the experts and make sure that science and data are what are driving our decisions. Kath, you're muted. All righty, any <laughs> question? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, my, my top priorities are responsible, competent management of the taxpayer dollars, ensuring community safety, a flourishing business environment, and empowering families in need. So what do I mean by responsible, competent management of the taxpayer dollars? As a business consultant, I have, and, and former deputy city manager, I have decades of experience in strategically managing budgets to meet demand. I will apply this experience in decision-making and make sure that our expenditures mirror the priorities of the community. By ensuring community safety, I mean, yes, getting and keeping criminals off the streets, but it also means making sure those streets are well-maintained and safe to drive on. And, uh, and Andy and I agree on wildfire mitigation. It is extremely important right now science and data, yes, but we have to use our hearts and our heads as well. A flourishing environment for our local businesses. First, do no harm. Take no government action that places undue burden on our business community, either financially or through unnecessary regulation. And, can, and empowering families in need by continuing to support the very good programs that we have in Jeffco right now that help people become self-sufficient this is a good investment of taxpayer dollars. Thank you, Joni. The second question, please explain your vision for the future pertaining to land use decisions and water requirements. The rotation will be Tracy and then Libby, and for District 2, Joni and Andy. Tracy? Question is around land use and water, right? Yes. Okay. So we know that water is um, like gold here in Colorado. It's so valuable and it is so rare and it is scarce. And so as we're making land use decisions, we need to make sure that we are um, taking into consideration our water usage. There are three statutory or um, uh, regulatory mechanisms around water in Jefferson County. One is um, the statute that says that any land use requirement needs to be um, uh, have an adequate uh, water supply. But statute does not define what adequ adequate is. Then there are two other st um, uh, regulatory mechanisms. Um, the comprehensive master plan spells out the process to be able to utilize, uh, integrate our community input, but also staff analysis, um, especially around water usage. So while uh, development and growth is really important, we need to make sure that we've got the water to be able to sustain that um, and utilizing our existing infrastructure and regulatory infrastructure to be able to do that. Thank you, Tracy. Libby, I'll repeat the question. Please explain your vision for the future pertaining to land use decisions and water requirements. Um, great question. You know, land use has changed over the last 20, 30 years. Back, way back in Jeffco, there used to be a lot of land and open space and great for new land use developments. Now, we are tight communities. Every land use opportunity that we have had at the Board of County Commissioners in the last few years has been 
one project moving into an established neighborhood. And we really need to take that into consideration. Those neighborhoods are established and we have to make sure that it's the right fit for that neighborhood and look at all the circumstances that surround that. Like Tracy said, water is really precious in our state. At the state house, they used to say, water's made for drink, whiskey's made for drinking and water's made for fighting. And that is so true in Colorado. It is so precious. And those mountain communities, most of them are off of wells. And we need to be careful that we make sure that they have substantial water in, in the ground that they can pull out just to drink, take showers, wash their dishes, do the needed things in life that we down here in the suburbs so cherish and take for granted sometimes. So as we look to land use and water, it's implicit that we factor in every time, especially in those mountain communities, how much water is available or we are gonna have some troubles. So thank you. Thank you, Libby. And now we turn to District 2 candidates and it'll be Joni and then Andy. And I'll repeat the question. Please explain your vision for the future pertaining to land use decisions and water requirements. Joni? You know, Jefferson County's population is going to continue to grow over the next several years. And the county's comprehensive plan, which is periodically updated, um, helps guide that growth and where that growth will occur. This is really where I encourage the community to engage, to help determine ahead of time where the appropriate development can or should occur. Keep in mind that county commissioners have land use, land use decision-making responsibilities only in the unincorporated areas, not within municipal boundaries. I'm a private property rights advocate a property owner should be able to use and develop the property for that which it is zoned. If a rezoning is requested though, I first look at the need for the proposed development and then potential impact on neighboring property owners' ability to continue to use their properties for which they are zoned and, and already in use impact on surrounding property values and finally look at whether resources such as water are sufficient to handle the development. Community members should not wait until the last minute to try to influence the specific development. They should engage at every step starting with the comprehensive plan. Lived in the mountain areas for about five years and I understand the importance of water and I think we need to have independent water studies, not just those provided by the developer. Thank you, Joni. Andy? Thank you so much for this uh, question. And I'm gonna go ahead with a, a quote I had uh, ready for it anyways, uh, from Mark Twain about uh, whiskey for drinking and, and water for fighting. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's absolutely true in my time in the legislature, uh, that, was, that was very true. And it's been very true th throughout the, the West. And uh, my understanding with water law uh, in Colorado compared to other states is Colorado has some of the most convoluted water laws uh, possible in, in, in the entire country. We need to make sure we are cutting through the, the fighting. At, at the end of the day, we need to work together. It's really interesting around water that uh, at the state legislature, which tends to be more partisan than, than at the county commissioner level, but water issues were always looked at in a very partisan way, not Democrat and Republican, but uh, uh, front range versus eastern, uh, the eastern plains and western slope. So it was, it, that's, that's how it was always looked at. Uh, land use is absolutely dependent on making sure that the residents, and we have more people in Jefferson County than the entire state of Wyoming, we have to make sure their voices are heard, what, what they're willing uh, to accept in their neighborhoods and working with uh, the, the folks who, who are, are looking to build in Jefferson County, but work together, make sure that we have a plan on clean water and keeping adequate open space available as well. Thank you, Andy. The next question, how do you propose improving 
housing affordability within Jefferson County. With District 1, it'll be Libby and then Tracy and then Andy and Joni for District 2. So this question goes to Libby first and it is how do you pr propose improving housing affordability within Jefferson County? Great, thank you. You know, I think the best and most efficient way for housing affordability, if we're talking about um, workforce housing and those type of things, is to work with our community housing authority. We have some great folks that are working at those authorities and they are making strides because they have the resources to not only work with our community leaders, but also with leaders at the federal level for grants and those type of things. And they also tap into the private sector, which is, is pertinent to getting these workforce housing places built around the county. It's imperative that people who work here can have the opportunity to live here. Also, for all housing that needs to be affordable for our families, our, you know, our children who are growing up, if we want them to live in Jefferson County, is we need to be careful that we don't regulate them out of business because regulations are just pass-through pass costs that create more instability and higher prices for homes in our area. Land here in Jefferson County is very expensive and so are homes. When they're building a million dollar track homes out west here, there's something to really think about of who can afford that. So I think working all together with our, our housing authorities, our um, city leaders, the people, the federal leaders for the great grants that they put down in the, the home grants and the um, CBD grants, CBDH, I can't ever remember that because that comes to my mind, is a great way and in a very, very effective way to keep our housing low. Thank you, Libby. Tracy? Thank you, affordable housing. So I've participated in the Arvada Affordable Housing Coalition over the last couple of years and know that there is some really creative thinking that's happening in Arvada. They are currently finishing up projects to help um, foster youth that have graduated from the system that but still need some of that structure. Isn't that exciting? Um, there's projects around combining Red Rock students with um, the, some of the senior population to be able to um, ro uh, roommate together, to be able to keep the senior in their home, but also be able to provide housing for some of those students. So all of these mechanisms and tools and creative ideas need to not be um, municipal only or uh, county only, but we really need to be working regionally. Um, that is so important. And we need to be thinking out of the box. At the state, we allocated, I think it was about $20 million in additional money this year towards um, uh, tax incentives for affordable housing. Um, and I know that the county has really invested in um, tax incentives also. Um, the comprehensive master plan has some great suggestions around affordable housing, whether that's streamlining permitting services, whether that's tax incentives, but um, it's important that all of the municipalities, the county regionally that we're all coming together, putting together a comprehensive integrated plan. Thank you, Tracy. On to District 2, it goes to Andy. I'll repeat the question. How do you propose improving housing affordability within Jefferson County? Great, thank you for the question. As a teacher, nothing is more heartbreaking than to have a student tell you that they couldn't do their homework, they couldn't uh, do their, their lessons because uh, they were too busy driving, driving from one uh, motel to another, or even worse, they had to sleep in a car last night and, and had no access to, to internet or, or any um, even just simple shelter. You know, the entire state of Utah has done housing first. Why can't we do that as a county or at least uh, as, as a region? This is a very complex issue. It cannot be solved by any single city, county. We need to look at it as a region and uh, as we've done uh, to a certain degree uh, as a state. So we absolutely uh, need to do all that. 
thinking out of the box, absolutely. Making sure that we have a homeless shelter here in Jefferson County, uh, absolutely, we need to do that. And make sure that we're not looking at affordable housing as an issue in itself. If uh, I, I very much believe that people in Jefferson County should be able to live, work, and play within Jefferson County. Even if they can afford to live here, are they going to be close enough to their jobs? Uh, or how do we make sure that they have access to transportation that uh, is close to the affordable housing that they can find? So these are all issues that we need to work together on and it really has to be a regional model. Thank you. Joni? And I think you're hearing a lot of agreement here um, and the one primarily all four of us are saying regional. We have to look at this as a regional issue. We can't solve it just in Jefferson County and have Adams or Arapahoe or Denver have completely different, different policies. Um, first, do no harm. I think that we can have an impact on the cost of housing in everything we do. If we are placing undue regulations on those building single family homes and multifamily homes, it's going to end up costing more. If we have artificial growth limits, property taxes are going to go up and property taxes are part of the affordability of, um, of housing. Taxes in any form on housing is uh, a for it causes the cost of housing to go up. Some creative things that we can look at um, would not be too difficult is the portability of senior and um, veteran uh, property tax credits. And I know the legislature had that um, on the chopping block this year and, and didn't do it. So thank you for that. Um, but the portability. So if somebody, seniors in a two-story house can downsize and still take their property tax um, credits with them, I think is, is important. So those are just a few ideas, but it's a regional discussion. Thank you all for that. The last formal question tackles probably the biggest aspect of your job. What factors will guide your financial and budgeting decisions? We're going to start with uh, District 1, and that will go to Tracy first, and then Libby. And District 2, Joni, you'll be first, and then Andy. So the question is, what factors will guide your financial and budgeting decisions? And you're on. <laughs> So you're right. Um, the budget is such an important issue and has, you know, there's been some serious, serious decisions that have been made the last couple of years and will need to be made in the future. Um, the, the citizens voted against de the deboosting initiative last year. I really want to commend my opponent, Libby, for voting uh, to put that on the ballot and that she supported deboosting uh, uh, the county. Jefferson County is only one of two counties in Colorado that does not have debrucing. Pretty serious issues. What factors do we use to be able to make budgetary decisions? How does it impact constituents? How does it impact small businesses? And um, what is need versus want? Hard decisions. And if we don't go back to the people and ask again, educate people around what debrucing is, because debrucing? I mean, what kind of word is that? It's not even in the dictionary. Who knows what that is? Um, and so many people have moved here to Jefferson County. If we don't um, go back and educate people and bring that back, I think um, we are in a position where we have to make some tough, tough decisions. Some of those first decision items, I think, have to be looking at administrative overhead and centralization of different services. So tough decisions um, have been made already by our county commissioners tough decisions in the future. Thank you, Tracy. Libby? That is such a timely question. Tomorrow, if you tune in to the county commissioner's meeting, we are going to hear the proposed budget. So perfect timing. You know, my decisions are always made with the Jeffco citizen in mind and what they have told me and what they want for their community. Their hard-earned tax dollars are precious and should be spent with that in mind. There are certain things that are constant in Jeffco, safe communities, great schools, and a top-notch open space program. And we need to make sure we listen and learn from the community on what is important to them. It's their community. And in turn, 
make sure we pro prioritize to provide those things that are vital to our constituents. Budget prioritization for the fairgrounds is a really good example of that. That's only one aspect, but something that we had to really look at in our budget and how much it was costing us. There was no one silver bullet to cut uh, $16.8 million last year or the 8.3 we're gonna cut this year. We've got to take little pieces and making sure that we're right sized in our staff and those type of things. But in the fairgrounds instance, our community spoke loud and clear that they wanted to protect the agriculture and equine heritage we so enjoy in Jeffco. And consequently, we went to great lengths to make sure that we found a way to ensure that would happen. And that's how we propose our budget. It's our government leaders and our community coming together. Thank you, Libby. The question goes to District 2, Joni and Andy, I'll repeat the question. What factors will guide your financial and budgeting decisions? It's the, it's the responsibility of the county commissioners to understand the priorities of the broader community, to stay focused on the basic services of government, those that government and only government can provide, to evaluate the efficiencies of every department, and to allocate funds accordingly. Across the board, departmental increases or decreases are not appropriate. I'll look ahead several years at what we anticipate will be happening, particularly with revenue and the revenue retention limits under the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, and strategically plan for the next one, three, and five year increments to ensure that we don't ever find ourselves in financial peril again. The county currently has two months of operating reserves. And there is the question about uh, debrucing or not debrucing, uh, that is elimination of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. But we have to look at preparation under either scenario. And two months of operating reserves is an example um, of something that just can't continue. We need to look ahead a little bit. We need to look ahead beyond what's in front of us today and what's likely to occur in the next three and five years. Thank you, Joni. Andy? Great, thank you for this question. And, and at, the, at the heart of every elected position in the state of Colorado is the budget question. And in fact, in the state of Colorado, every uh, government employee, every elected uh, person has to balance the budget for which they're responsible. I did that when I was in the state legislature for 12 years. We are we have the responsibility of having a budget, balanced budget, and that is the first factor uh, I, I will definitely uh, look at as a county commissioner is that we have to balance the budget. I also strongly believe that a, a budget is a moral document and that the the priorities of the community must uh, be uh, be shown through the budget. And I very strongly uh, agree that it's the, the role of the county commissioners to listen to the constituents, to listen to everyone throughout Jefferson County as to what their priorities are. And you can only do that through having open meetings, being transparent, being willing to listen, and going out, outside the box and, and uh, meeting people where they are, not uh, constantly uh, making people show up to your meetings, but also uh, attend meetings that other people are having and connect with groups like the League of Women Voters to make sure all voices uh, are being heard. Thank you, Andy. That concludes the question and answer section. We will now move on to the one minute closing statements. We're gonna rotate districts this time. We're gonna start with district two and Andy, you're going to be up first and then Joni. And then in district one, It'll be Libby first and then Tracy. Andy? Great, thank you so much. And again, I, I really appreciate the League of Women Voters working so hard in a, in a nonpartisan fashion to make sure that our democracy, our democracy is strong. And that, that can only happen when you have elected leaders that listen to their constituents. And that's what I've shown through my 12 years of uh, elected in elected office is uh, my ability to listen to everyone. I understand that 
an elected official needs to listen to everyone, not just those who voted for them. And I pledge to abide by the results of this election too. I will not, uh, I will not play games around that. So uh, I, I really appreciate it. I, uh, Andy Kerr running uh, in District 2 for County Commissioner, uh, almost a lifelong resident here, raising my own kids, and I really hope I can earn your support. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andy. Joni? Thank you so much to the League. We really appreciate this opportunity. Unlike state or federal government, the decisions of our local elected officials have the most immediate impact on our daily lives. A supporter of mine said, forget all that slop in Washington, this is Jefferson County. And I really like that advice. It is imperative to elect people at the local level who clearly understand their role and the impact that their decisions have on the broader community. Experience matters. I leave you with two promises. I don't want to seek any higher office and I won't leave my term before it's up to seek any higher office. And I will do my best to honor Jefferson County's rich heritage while strategically planning its future. I ask for your support and I won't let you down. To learn more about my campaign, please visit joniforjeffco.com. And thank you again to the league for another successful forum. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you, Joni. And now on to District 1. It will be Libby first and then Tracy. Thank you. Hey, Kath, thank you so much and the League of Women Voters for having us here and to give the opportunities for the voters to, to hear who we are and what we want to work on. It's a great opportunity. You know, I always believe that we need to work together to make Jeffco a vibrant place to live, work, and play. And the experience on the board that I have is unmatched. There has been a lot of turnover on this board in the last few years. And I have been on this board for five and a half years. There is going to be for sure one new person on this board. And the other person on the board only has about two and a half years experience. We need someone with experience on this board and not only experience, but also the tenacity to be able to sit down with the voters and make sure they are part of the solution of this county. I would be honored if you would give me four more years to work alongside you all. Again, my name is Libby Zabo. I'm the commissioner in District 1, and you can go to LibbyZabo.com and find out more about me. Thank you so much, Kath, for the opportunity and to the league. You are so welcome, and thank you, Libby. Tracy? Thank you. So um, John in Jefferson County sent this to me. Tracy Croft Tharp has been accessible to constituents. She listens, takes all questions, gets information if she doesn't have the answer on the spot, refers constituents to sources and invites them to participate as citizens seeking answers. She is a leader with integrity and compassion who always responds with a servant leadership outlook to serve her community, all individuals. Thank you, John. So um, I really wanna thank the League for uh, providing this forum. Kath, thank you very much. Special thank you to our VADA unit. I'm asking for your support. I'm Tracy Croft Tharp. Um, my experience, my expertise, my background is, um, uh, is perfect for this time. So thank you. Thank you, Tracy. That concludes the formal part of our presentation. I'd like, or the League of Women Voters would like to thank the candidates for participating in this forum and you the voter for watching. For all the candidate and ballot information, please consider using vote411.org. This award-winning online voter guide is simple to use and provides a side-by-side -side comparison for all candidates and pro-con arguments for all the statewide ballot issues, all 11 of them. Mail-in voting began in Colorado in 2013. Voters can also drop off their ballots at drop boxes or in person. This year, Colorado has increased the number of drop boxes and expanded a tracking system in which voters can receive text and email notifications 
that their ballots have been received and counted. To find your closest Dropbox or voter service polling center location and to track your ballot, please visit votejeffco.com. The voter service and polling centers will open on Monday, no October 19th and remain open through 7 p.m. on November 3rd. At these centers, you can vote in person. If you need a replacement ballot, you can obtain one there. And even if you need to register to, to vote, you can register and vote at one of these centers at the same time. If you wish to mail your ballot, please do so no longer, no later than October 27th to ensure that it's received by seven o'clock on election day. The last day to cast your ballot is election day, November 3rd. Thank you again to the candidates for participating today and thank you for watching. Be informed and vote.